Okay, hello YouTube. How are you guys doing today? You are back in my kitchen. I am fixing to go out on the road and I am going to be preparing food for the road. So usually I, I do this in, in uh, one of the first few days that I'm out uh, on the road, but instead this time I'm going to do it before I leave the house and try to get a jump on it. So this is what I will be preparing. Um, and this will become the base for pretty much all of the food that I make. Okay, so we have uh, celery, we have green onion, we have purple onion, bell peppers, we have uh, zucchini, squash, well this is actually a squash, and then anyway, a different type of squash, and then jalapeno peppers, and green beans. Won't do anything with the green beans, possibly repackage them. Um, but that's about it. The rest of this stuff I'm going to chop and dice and mix together and this is going to become the base for all of the food that I cook pretty much while I'm out on the road. Okay, This is where everything starts and I do the same thing all the time while I'm out there because it's easy, it's convenient, and, uh, and it's healthy. So I'm going to pause the video. Hopefully this will work the way I'm wanting it to work. But we're going to pause the video and then we'll bring it back on here in a little bit. Hold on and I'll be right back. Okay, we are back. And uh, this is probably going to go sideways. That's what went wrong with one of my last videos. So let me turn it back around this way. Anyway, we are back. The zucchini squash mixture is finished. And what I'll do is I'll seal this bag and I'll, you know, press as much air out of it as I can get out of it. And then we will uh, put this in the refrigerator and let it chill tonight. In the morning, when I get ready to leave, um, about an hour or so before I get ready to leave, I'll go out and uh, I'll start my truck up so that the, air can, the refrigerator in the truck... Um, powers up and, and starts to get cool again then this will be in the refrigerator this is enough squash here uh, squash and zucchini to make oh probably a good 10 meals um, which which is about oh almost two weeks okay and this will stay good in this bag in the refrigerator for that entire time um, can't go too much further than that, but it will stay good. So um, that is that. All right, next what we're going to do is we're going to make a mixture of the celery, the green onion, the purple onion, and the bell peppers. Okay, so we'll come back on here in just a minute and show you that. Then the last thing that we will cut up will be the peppers. All right, so we'll be back in a minute. Okay, we are finished with the second step. This is the red, yellow, orange bell pepper, um, the red onion, green onions, and um, celery, all mixed up in here together. Um, another look at the back side of it here. This will go with the squash in the refrigerator. And uh, this doesn't keep as long as the squash does, okay? Um, but it goes a lot faster also. Um, this will keep about, oh, um, a week and a half at most. And um, usually right about a week, you know, I try to have this done. So, um, you know, I use a lot of this when I'm cooking. Um, so it goes pretty fast, and a lot of times I have to restock before I finish the uh, previous amount of squash. Okay, so um, next we're going to chop up the jalapenos. We're going to seed those and chop them up, and then we are going to be done with our prep for going back out on the road. And then I'm going to talk to you a little bit about what we've put in here and why I use these particular ingredients. And, uh, you know, in the different things that you can do with them. All right. So hold on. We'll be right back. Okay. We are back. Our chopping is finished for the day. 
This is the jalapenos. This is in a regular uh, sandwich size bag. You saw the big old pile of jalapenos I had. Once they're seeded, you notice there's no, none, if not maybe one or two little bitty seeds, but I got rid of pretty much all the seeds. There's a couple of them right there. Yeah, right there. Uh, personally, I don't mind the seeds. Um, the seeds do make it uh, considerably warmer, but jalapenos are not really all that hot. Um, once they are cooked, um, they turn a sweet color. It's the seeds in the jalapenos that are hot. So, um, you know, if you seed the jalapenos, you wash them after you've seeded them, chop them up and you cook them, then they turn sweet, but they've still got quite a few health benefits. And we'll talk about that here in a minute. Let me clean up my mess right here, put this in the refrigerator so it get, so it's cold, and then I'll be back in just a few minutes. Okay, I am back, and we are sitting at the computer now, and uh, what I want to do is talk to you a little bit about the ingredients that we just cut up, and why I chose uh, the ingredients that I chose. Um, as y'all know, um, I've had, get, and my cat wanted to say hi, hey, say hi, say hi, say hi, all right, now go, get out of here, all right. Um, anyway, as y'all know, I've had some health, health issues, um, weight, uh, excessive weight. I was up to 351 pounds. I'm down to, um, 290, 298 now. Um, high blood pressure, uh, which I've never had before and, uh, diabetes. All right. And so, um, all of those things come from the choices that I made in eating, all right, for the last several years, I've had a uh, majority fast food uh, type diet, uh, which is pretty common for um, those of us that live out on the road. And, uh, and so, you know, now I've got to try to change that and reverse it. So um, we cut up some yellow squash, all right, so I'm just going to kind of, I'm going to summarize, I'm reading off the computer from um, doctor sites, uh, nutritional sites and whatnot. So, um, I'm just going to kind of summarize, um, yellow squash is low in calories. It only has about 36 calories, seven grams of carbohydrates, less than a gram of fat and a gram of protein. It's cholesterol free and, um, what few calories it contains comes from its carbohydrate content, uh, which is particularly low. If you're trying to lose weight, yellow squash is a great choice to replace higher calorie vegetables like potatoes and corn. Note that they, they said it's a good choice to replace potatoes, and that's because it has about the same texture as a potato. So you get just as full eating um, squash as you would eating about the same amount of potato. Um, it doesn't take a lot. It has about the same texture. It has about the same feel to it when it's cooked properly. Um, it's a good substitute for potato in your food, which is one of the reasons why I used it as the base for the, um, you know, I don't even know what you'd call what I make, um, but we'll talk about that in a minute. But anyway, the base for the skillet meal, meals that I make. It's rich in vitamins. Um, it's a uh, huge source of vitamin C, a good source of magnesium, a good source of vitamin A, um, it has a concentra concentration of carotenoids, including uh, beta carotene, fiber, folate, copper, riboflavin, and phosphorus. It's abundant in potassium. Um, potassium is a key electrolyte in the balance of fluids and also provides for muscle energy. Um, in addition, it's high in manganese, a mineral which helps the body process fats, carbohydrates, and glucose. All right, stop right there. Those are those are three of the things that I personally have problems with and, and that every diabetic has problems with. And that's the fact that as a diabetic, your body struggles in processing fat, carbohydrates, and glucose. So this, in, in the fact that it helps you process fats, carbohydrates, and glucose, it automatically helps your body more efficiently get rid of the things that are causing you to gain weight to begin with, the fats and the carbohydrates, and it helps to... Um, it helps to keep your your uh, glucose levels even or your glycemic index. All right. It's also a cancer preventative. It's abundant in antioxidants that keep free radicals at bay. All right. With its high beta carotene content, yellow squash is a great source of protection from pollutants and chemicals that lead to cancer. 
It's high in vitamin C, which helps to prevent premature aging and cancer, as well as inhibiting cell division. It's good for heart health. It contains negligible fat, no measurable cholesterol. Um, let's see, let's skim through here. Magnesium found in yellow squash has been shown to reduce the risk of heart attack and stroke. Um, along with the potassium content. Magnesium is good for reducing high blood pressure. There's a second reason why I chose uh, to eat a lot of squash. It, it helps to reduce high blood pressure. The vitamin C and beta carotene levels in yellow squash may also aid in preventing the oxidation of cholesterol. In other words, it helps your body from storing cholesterol in your system to begin with. Uh, as cholesterol in its oxidized form builds up in the walls of blood vessels, such nutrients may reduce the development of Arthrosclerosis. Sorry, I have difficulty with those big words. The presence of the vitamin folate in yellow squash is required by our bodies to remove an unhealthy metabolic byproduct called homocysteine, which may contribute to heart attack and stroke risk. In other words, um, this stuff helps break down all the plaque that's inside your veins and keeps it from building up. While the nutrients in squash combine to make a heart healthy disease preventing food, yellow squash is already particularly rich in fiber. All right, um, the perfect ingredient for lowering high cholesterol. So fiber in your system helps to wash the cholesterol out of your body, um, which is something that we we need in there. Um, colon health uh, at 2.52 grams per serving, the abundant fiber content of yellow squash is indispensable for the excretion of toxins from the body. And it helps with your colon health. All right, we'll, we'll skim through the rest of it. Prostate health. It's been shown to alleviate the symptoms of a condition named benign prostate hypertrophy, or BPH. A man with BPH suffers from problematically enlarged prostate gland, leading to difficulties with both urinary and sexual function. Eye health. It's particularly high in concentrations of beta-carotene and lutein. Lucian, lutein. Dietary lutein helps prevent the onset of cataracts and macular degeneration, which often leads to blindness. A cup of yellow squash provides 135 micrograms of beta carotene and 2,400 micrograms of lutein. All right, healthy bones. Yellow squash contains high levels of manganese and vitamin C. Manganese aids in maintaining healthy bone structure, calcium absor absorption, enzyme creation, and bone building. It also contributes to the mineral density of the spinal column. All right, so... You know, um, read me off, you know, I challenge you to read me off the health benefits of a uh, bacon cheeseburger, you know, or fries. There are none, you know. Um, we need to get away from eating the processed stuff that we eat and get back to eating a healthy diet. You know, I just listed a ton of benefits. That's just the yellow squash. Let's go to the green squash, otherwise known as zucchini. All right. It has 36 calories, 10% of the RDA of dietary fiber, which aids in digestion, prevents constipation, and maintains low blood sugar and curbs overeating. Again, um, the green squash or zucchini has about the same texture as potato. So it, it is equally satisfying to eat and it tastes good when it's cooked properly and it's not soggy and, and mushy. It tastes good. It is a good tasting food. But most important for me, taste is secondary. Most important for me is that it helps to maintain low blood sugar and curbs overeating. It also helps to lower cholesterol. Okay, we have that fiber thing again. However, this does it in a different way. It attaches itself to bile acids that the liver makes from cholesterol for digesting fat. Because fiber binds so well with the bile acid, thus crowding its ability to immediately digest fat, the liver is charged with producing more bile acid. The liver then draws upon even more cholesterol to produce bile acid, consequently lowering the overall cholesterol in your body. Furthermore, the high levels of vitamin C and vitamin A prevent cholesterol from oxidizing in the body's blood vessels, thus hampering the onset of arthros arthrosclerosis anyway, that big word, um, which essentially means it, it prevents the cholesterol from building up in your arteries and creating plaque that will block the arteries from pumping blood into your heart. That's what that big um, atherosclerosis means. Um, let's see. Um, let's see. We have, again, the um, 
benefits to your to your uh, di digestive tract, prostate health. Um, it's essentially the same as in uh, zucchini. It's also an anti-inflammatory. Vitamin C and A not only serve the body as powerful antioxidants, but also effective anti-inflammatory agents. Along with the copper that's found in zucchini, these vitamins deter the development of many hyperinflammatory disorders, including asthma, uh, osteoarthritis, and rheumatoid arthritis. It helps to prevent heart attacks and strokes. Um, a one cup serving of zucchini contains 10% of the recommended daily allowance of magnesium, a mineral proven to reduce the risk of heart attack and stroke. Zucchini also provides folate, a vitamin needed to break down the dangerous amino acid homocysteine, which, if levels in the body shoot up, can contribute to a heart attack and stroke. Excuse me. Along with magnesium, the potassium found in zucchini helps to lower blood pressure. All right. Well, high manganese is an essential nutrient. Manganese provides many health benefits, con contributes to a slew of normal physiological functions. Um, one cup of zucchini contains 19% of the recommended daily allowance of manganese, which helps the body metallize protein and carbohydrates, participates in the production of sex hormones, and catalyzes the synthesis of fatty acids and cholesterol. Uh, it increases the levels of superoxide dismutase, the enzyme responsible for protecting uh, mitochondria against oxidative stress. Um, finally, manganese is essential for the production of proline and the amino acid that contains collagen to form, thus allowing for healthy skin and proper wound healing. So all that, you know, good doctor talk right there uh, essentially means that it helps you heal a whole lot faster. All right, take a break here for one quick second. Okay, I am back. Um, the wife came home, and uh, her and the kid are in there making dinner. So I'm going to continue this and uh, finish it out. If she uh, sneaks up behind me, I'm going to catch her on camera and put her on YouTube. All right, so let's move uh, from the squash to the red, yellow, and orange bell peppers. All right. Um, first, I, I just kind of want to summarize this first couple paragraphs on here where it says that the pigment that makes red, yellow, and orange bell peppers so colorful also contains a health giving properties. Um, now, it, I just kind of wanted to focus on that because that's the reason that I didn't choose green bell peppers. Okay, um, the bell peppers, and this is all bell peppers, they're rich in vitamin C, an antioxidant that helps protect your body from free radicals, which are substances that damage cells. Um, let's see, uh, red, orange, and yellow bell peppers are good sources of uh, carotenoids, um, which are the pigments that give uh, bell peppers the bright hue. Ah, there she is. <laughs> I told you I was going to get her. All right, um, uh, let's see. Uh, your body converts beta carotene to vitamin A or retinol, which is vital for good vision. A strong immune system and a healthy skin. Beta carotene also contains powerful antioxidant properties that reduce the risk of cancer and heart problems. Um, uh, they contain lice, lycopene. Lycopene, a pigment that's responsible for the color and vibrant red bell peppers, also acts as a powerful antioxidant, helping to guard your cells against harm from oxidative stress. Um, research uh, results suggest that eating foods rich in lycopene is associated with prevention of prostate cancer and heart disease. Um, lightly cook red bell peppers in olive or canola oil because the pepper releases more lycopene when cooked. Um, I cook them. So. Um, lutein and zeaxanthin. Your eyes contain concentrated amounts of lutein and zeaxanthin, substances vital to eye health. These car carotenoids, typically found in vegetables and fruits, help protect the area near the center of your eye's retina, the macula, from light-induced damage. Lutein and uh, zeaxanthin are thought to limit the risk of age-related macular degeneration or uh, by dyeing the macula yellow, thus causing it to act like natural sunglasses for your eyes. Um, fiber. We've already talked about fiber several times. Okay, so that is um, the yellow, red, and orange bell peppers. Um, 
Let's see. Let's go to eating red onions. Red onions are packed with quercetin. I think I'm pronouncing it right. Quercetin. Anyway, uh, red and yellow onions are one of the best natural sources of quercetin, a bioflavonoid that is particularly well suited for scavenging free radicals. Um, when they talk about free radicals, they're talking about the the um, things that cause cancer. Um, Aside from its antioxidant properties, quercetin has been found to possess cancer-fighting, antifungal, antibacterial, and anti-inflammatory properties. It has shown promising potential for preventing and controlling the formation of intestinal polyps, suppressing the rhinoviruses that are the underlying cause of the common cold, treating psoriasis, and inhibiting the replication of viruses including the herpes simplex virus that can cause cold sores. It has also been shown to reduce the risk of stomach cancer. According to one study, half an onion a day could reduce the risk of stomach cancer by as much as 50%. Um, allicin in onions fights regenerative disease and fungi. In addition to quercetin, uh, red onions provide allicin, a potential health-promoting compound that is found in onions and other members of the allium family when the plant is crushed or chopped. Allicin has been shown to promote cardiovascular health, prevent and treat cancer, and reduce high blood pressure. Um, it's also been suggested that it could be helpful for people with dandruff. Um, chromium makes onions a great food to tackle insulin resistance. Um, onions are a rich source of chromium, a trace mineral that can help control glucose levels. Again, a, a, diabetic, um, a diabetic need. Um, this is great news for those who suffer from insulin resistance as chromium is an essential for insulin activity and carbohydrate, fat, and protein metabolism. A lack of chromium-rich foods, such as onions in a diet, may lead to insulin resistance and impaired blood sugar control and may increase the risk of cardiovascular disease and type 2 diabetes. Um, furthermore, there is some evidence suggesting that severe chromium deficiency may make weight loss more difficult or even cause weight gain. Um, Okay, additional health benefits associated with red onions are the low GI rating. A GI rating is a glucemic, glu, glucemic index. Sorry, for some reason my brain just didn't want to pronounce that word. A glycemic index, that's, that's what I was trying to say. Um, no, that's what GI stands for. The glycemic index is the, the measure by which, how, that, that measures how fast your body takes carbohydrates or foods and transfers it into uh, glucose um, or, or sugars in your in your system um, and it's a really important thing um, for uh, diabetics so low glycemic foods are, are really something that, that we need to focus on so anyway it, the, the article says with a glycemic index Rating of 10, onions are considered a low glycemic food. The glycemic index ranks carbohydrate-containing foods based on how quickly they raise the blood sugars. Um, foods are rated between 0 and 100. The higher the rating, the quicker the food will release energy and cause blood glucose levels to rise. Um, let's see. Let me skim through this real quick. Um, but now also many weight-conscious people are using the concept of the glycemic index to help them lose weight and improve their health. By choosing low gly gly glycemic index foods, such as red onions, over high GI foods, you can regulate your blood sugar and insulin levels, which in turn cause the body to store less fat. Okay, so that is um, onions. All right, let's go to the green onions, um, which I also added in there. Uh, bone health. Uh, these, this, this hits quite a, quite a wide range of things in your body. Bone health. A single 12 gram green onion stalk, excuse me, contains nearly 20 micrograms of vitamin K and 1.6 milligrams of vitamin C. Um, let's see. Um, both, both vitamins K and C are crucial for the growth, development, and maintenance of strong bones. Okay. Eye health. The body needs vitamin A to produce rhodos rhodopsin, the protein in the eyes that allows retinal receptors to absorb light. Um, people whose diets don't include enough vitamin A can develop night blindness and other vision disorders including corneal ulcers. A green onion stalk contains 24 micrograms of vitamin A in the form of proto-vitamin A carotenoid, a compound that the body converts to retinol. Um, 
Heart health. Vitamin C, vitamin A found in foods like green onions both have strong antioxidant properties. Uh, immune system health. According to the American Institute for Cancer Research and the Linus Pauling Institute, onions, like green onions, are a rich source of phytochemicals, especially flavonoid compounds such as quercetin and um, anthocyanins. These particular phytochemical compounds are naturally occurring plant chemicals that support the function of the immune system. Okay, um, and we're almost done with all this. The last is, is the jalapeno pepper. And the jalapeno pepper may very well have more health benefits than all the rest of these combined. All right, weight loss. Peppers contain a chemical known as capsation, which is actually what gives peppers their hot properties. Capsation is also good for helping you to lose weight. It's commonly found in many weight loss pills and supplements. Um, and it says, how does capsation help you lose weight? Very simply, it literally burns away calories and fat. So that hot feeling you get from eating peppers is also burning away the pounds. Arthritis. Capsation also acts as an anti-inflammatory, which makes it great for reducing swelling and pain in those who suffer from arthritis. Cancer. A study of British scientists at the University of Nottingham and another study by the American Associate of Cancer Research reports that capsation found in peppers actually is able to kill some cancer cells specifically prostate cancer. Headaches. The capsation in peppers is also known to block the neuro, neuropeptide known as substance P, which is a main pain transmitter to the brain. What this means is that peppers can actually help to ease pain. Nasal congestion. This one might seem a bit obvious. Uh, the heat in peppers, again caused by capsation, clears the sinuses. Ulcers. Peppers might not be able to cure stomach ulcers, but they can prevent the ulcers from happening in the first place. Peppers kill bad bacteria in the stomach and intestines, and often this bacteria is what leads to stomach ulcer ulcers. Let me scroll down here for a second. Um, high blood pressure. Jalapenos are chili pepper, and chili peppers commonly have lots of flavonoids, vitamin C and vitamin A. And guess what those things are good for? We've already talked about that, lowering one's blood pressure. Fluid loss. Too much fluid in the body can be a bad in multiple ways, but most commonly it's bad for the heart. See that all that fluid can build up around the heart, thus putting a strain on the heart and potentially damaging it. One sign of too much fluid retention is swollen ankles. Another symptom is difficulty in breathing because the fluid is putting pressure on the lungs. Um, let's see. Peppers cause you to sweat. The more you sweat, the less fluid there is in your body. Heart attack. Numerous studies have shown that in countries where peppers are common in the diet, the citizens there have fewer heart attacks. Antioxidants. We've already talked about that. So, um, that runs through the health benefits of the ingredients that I chose to add to what I eat every day, uh, pretty much in the truck, or at least, you know, five days out of seven. Um, two ways in which I use the ingredients um, that I chopped up earlier in the video. Um, the first way was um, what was to uh, put it in a skillet. I mix it all together in a skillet. I add meat and spices and I, I, I grill it in the skillet um, with real butter until it, it's browned uh, on both sides and then and the meat is fully cooked through. Excellent, fantastic meal. Um, I, I usually add um, the uh, wow green beans to it. All right. Uh, second is to make a stew. Um, essentially, you do the the same thing as you would with any other stew. You put water in there um, or vegetable stock, and then you add all the vegetables in there with a meat product. Um, those are two things that I do all the time in the truck. Uh, very good meals. Um, I usually make enough to eat for two days in a row, so I only actually cook every other day. On the off days, I'm heating it up and not cooking it. So, um, that's just kind of a, a rundown. I know it's been a long video. Glad y'all stuck with me. Hope somebody got something out of it. Peace out.